Hey everyone, I'm gonna talk about metabolic alkalosis. So let's get started. Metabolic alkalosis results in an elevated blood pH and an elevated bicarbonate level, HCO3. And this usually occurs because we've had excessive loss of acids such as hydrogen ions, or we've had an increase in the amount of bases like bicarbonate, that HCO3. Now, what are some conditions that could cause either of these two things to happen? Well, to help us remember those conditions, let's remember the word alkali. Alkali is a synonym for base. First, we have A for acid loss via the stomach. Your stomach acid is really rich in hydrogen ions. So if we are over suctioning the patient, removing too much of their GI juice, or they're vomiting, they're losing a lot of hydrogen ions, which when we drop hydrogen ion concentration, we increase that blood pH because all blood pH is is measuring the concentration of hydrogen ions in the body. Then we have L for low chloride level. When we have a low chloride level in the body, this causes our kidneys to start to decrease its excretion of bicarbonate. So when we decrease excreting bicarbonate in our urine, that's actually going to raise the levels in our body. When we have too much bases, they are going to neutralize those acids, which will Will throw us into these alkalotic conditions. And then we have K for potassium loss. So whenever we have hypokalemia in a patient, what happens is that it really affects hydrogen ions. It causes those hydrogen ions to move inside the cell. So instead of being in the fluid surrounding that cell, in that extracellular fluid, it will start to migrate inward, which will drop our hydrogen ion amounts, which is going to increase our blood pH. Then we have A for aldosterone increase. So whenever we have a condition like hyperaldosteronism, we have a high level of aldosterone in the body, it's gonna do three things. One thing is it's gonna cause our body to keep sodium, which in the end is gonna cause us to waste more hydrogen ions. Again, we're losing our hydrogen ions, which raises our blood pH and keep bicarb. And then we have L for loop and thiazide diuretics. These diuretics, they increase urinary output, but also in that urine will be potassium. So we're at risk for hypokalemia. And whenever we put a patient in hypokalemia, we just learned it messes with the hydrogen ion concentration, which will increase the risk of developing metabolic alkalosis. And then lastly, I for infusing too much sodium bicarb IV. So this could happen if the patient was in, let's say, metabolic acidosis, where they were ordered sodium bicarbonate. They received too much, so now we flipped them over into alkalosis. Because bicarb and that sodium bicarb fluid acts as a base. So if we give them too much of a base, that will go in there, neutralize too many hydrogen ions, which we don't want, and send them into alkalosis. Now to help us understand metabolic alkalosis a little bit better, let's talk more in depth about bases. Bases are materials that once you break them down in a solution, they neutralize acids by binding with the hydrogen ions. So in a sense, what it does is it acquires a hydrogen ion and then neutralizes. It. Now, hydrogen ions play a big role in helping us determine our blood pH because a blood pH, as I pointed out earlier, is a concentration of hydrogen ions. And think of hydrogen ions as little acids in the body. When you have a high collection of these hydrogen ions, it will actually drop the blood pH and make your body more acidic. But if you don't have a lot of hydrogen ions, like here in metabolic alkalosis, it will actually make the body too alkaline and increase the blood pH. And our body likes this narrow range for its blood pH. It wants it between 7.35 to 7.45. Anything less than 7.35 is too acidic. Anything greater than 7.45 is too alkaline. And the body's always trying to maintain this 20 to 1 ratio between bases and acids. It wants 20 bases for every acid. And an important base in the body is called bicarbonate, HCO3. And this is actually a weak base that will help neutralize, hence bind to acids like hydrogen ions. And when they do this, they increase the pH level. Now your body has these internal systems that help maintain this acid base balance. The two systems I wanna talk about are the respiratory and renal system. With the respiratory system, it works fairly fast whenever we have an acid base imbalance. And how it works is that it affects carbon dioxide levels by causing you to change your respiratory rate and depth. 
For example, your respiratory system can cause you to breathe faster and deeper. And whenever you're doing that, think about what's happening. What are you blowing off if you're breathing really fast and deep? You're blowing off carbon dioxide. And this is really beneficial whenever you are experiencing acidosis because carbon dioxide plays a role with the formation of carbonic acid, which will affect our hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions are acidic. So if we can lower the amount of carbon dioxide by breathing it off, we can affect in the long run hydrogen ion concentration, which will help increase that blood pH back to normal. On the flip side, your respiratory system can cause you to breathe slower. So think about it. Whenever you're breathing slower, what are you keeping more of? You're keeping more of carbon dioxide. And this is very beneficial whenever you have alkalosis going on where you're too basic because keeping carbon dioxide is going to cause you to create more hydrogen ions. So a lot of times whenever you have a patient in an alkalotic state, you will see that they have bradypnea where their respirations are slow. They're having hypoventilation. And the whole purpose of this is to keep that carbon dioxide because when we keep the carbon dioxide that stays in our blood, that carbon dioxide is going to bind with water. When it binds with water, it's going to form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is a weak acid and it breaks apart. When it breaks apart, it increases hydrogen ions. Those hydrogen ions will go in there and neutralize the bicarbonate. Whenever we neutralize the bicarbonate, that is going to help bring down that blood pH to normal. And then the renal system will come into play. Now, I like to think of the renal system as the slow and steady system. It's like the turtle. It's slow, but once it gets going, it does its thing. So with this system, what's going to happen is it is going to help retain hydrogen ions. So why do we need hydrogen ions? Because they're going to help make things more acidic, which is really needed when we have metabolic alkalosis. So those hydrogen ions will go and neutralize that bicarbonate. Plus, the kidneys can start to excrete extra bicarb, which again will help lower that blood pH. Now, one of the ways you can tell that your patient's in metabolic alkalosis is that you can look at their arterial blood gas results, their ABGs. So what are ABGs gonna look like in a person with metabolic alkalosis? Well, there's three things you gotta look at. You gotta look at the blood pH, the bicarbonate level, and the PaCO2. So the blood pH, again, a normal was what? 7.35 to 7.45. With this, the blood pH is gonna be greater than 7.45. It's gonna be on the alkaline side. The bicarbonate, which represents our metabolic system, a normal is 22 to 26 milliequivalents per liter. And with this, it's going to be elevated. So it's gonna be greater than 26. It's gonna be on the alkaline side. And then our PaCO2, which represents our respiratory system, it can be one of two things. It could be normal or it could be elevated. So a normal level is 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. If the body isn't trying to compensate, that respiratory, the PaCO2, is going to be normal because our body hasn't decreased our respiration yet in hope of retaining that CO2. So it'll just be within that 35 to 45 range. However, if it was trying to compensate, like partially compensate, it would start to cause your respiratory system to keep that CO2. So you would start to see the CO2 levels rise and they would be greater than 45. Now let's analyze an arterial blood gas problem. So this problem here actually comes from my workbook called ABG Interpretation. So if you need more practice or explanation on this topic, you can get a copy of this book. So our problem says we have a pH of 7.53, a PaCO2 of 49, and a bicarb HCO3 of 28. So how I'm gonna solve this is I'm gonna use the tic-tac-toe method. You could use Rome or whatever you prefer. So we're gonna set up our grid. We have acid over there on the left, normal in the middle, and then base here on the right. First, let's analyze that pH. A normal is 7.35 to 7.45. We're at 7.53, that is alkaline. So we're gonna put pH under base. The PaCO2 is 49, a normal is 35 to 45. This is elevated, so we're gonna put the PaCO2 under acid, it's on the acid side. Then our bicarb is 28. Normal is 22 to 26, this is elevated, so we're gonna put 
our HCO3 under base. Now what we're looking for with this tic-tac-toe method is a vertical three in a row and we do have one. Now sometimes you won't have a vertical three in a row and that tips you off that you're dealing with full compensation. So we can go ahead and mark that off because we do not have that here. So we look over here at our vertical three in a row under base we have pH and our HCO3 which again represents metabolic. So we have metabolic alkalosis. Now that we've determined that we have to figure out do we have partial compensation or is it uncompensated? So the answer is it's partial compensation. Now how do I know that? Well how I know that is that I look at the respiratory system because the respiratory system is that system that should be trying to compensate for these alkalotic conditions. It should cause our respiratory system to retain CO2, which will hopefully decrease our blood pH. And that is exactly what our respiratory system is doing. It's trying to retain, hence increase that CO2 level because it is elevated to 49. Now it would be uncompensated, meaning the respiratory system is not trying to compensate at all, if that PaCO2 was within normal range. So if it was between 35 to 45, we would say it was uncompensated. Now that we know what a patient's arterial blood gases will look like with metabolic alkalosis, how will they be presenting with their signs and symptoms? A big one you're going to see is bradypnea. That's those slow respirations. Now that's a compensatory mechanism, but it can become really severe where it leads to respiratory failure. And the patient can have dysrhythmia. So you really want to pay attention to their ECG because this is arising from hypokalemia where we have a low potassium level. So whenever a patient has a low Low potassium level you want to look specifically at that ST segment with a low potassium level it will be depressed and you'll want to look at their T wave which could be inverted like flipped upside down now normally after the T wave is a flat line but whenever you have hypokalemia where it's severe you can actually have what's called a U wave after that T wave also arising from this low potassium level could be tetany tremors muscle cramping they can feel tired and irritable what are some nursing interventions for the patient with metabolic alkalosis? Well, of course, we want to monitor that ECG, the respiratory status, and neurostatus. We also want to keep an eye on their electrolyte levels, particularly potassium due to hypokalemia and that chloride level, which could be hypochloremia. So the healthcare provider may order supplementation that you will be administering to the patient. And if the patient is vomiting, we want to address that because remember those GI juices are really rich in hydrogen ions and we need to keep those hydrogen ions in this condition. So an antiemetic may be ordered. Also certain diuretics may need to be held, particularly those loop and thiazide diuretics. And the reason for that is because they drop our potassium level and when we drop our potassium level way too low it affects hydrogen ion concentration making alkalosis worse and sometimes a medication can be ordered called acetazolamide which brand name is diamox and this is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor and it's actually a diuretic and what it does is it decreases the reabsorption of bicarb so we're not keeping more bicarb instead it's going to help us excrete it via the urine which is really helpful when we're in alkalosis okay so that wraps up this review on metabolic alkalosis and if you'd like to watch more videos in this series you can access the link in the description below Hello.